All right, Star Fury, your time to shine. I'll take you just in case. I don't do shields. Damn, man. I just... Ugh. I'm not bad at this game. I don't understand why I can't figure this out. Statement, what you you are what you eat isn't really true. For example, if you eat a vegan, you are not vegan. Cam cool, what's going on, man? Welcome back. The thing that's really getting me is that normally when I make mistakes, I can see what I'm doing wrong. I cannot see what I'm doing wrong right now. I don't see how to do it better. And that's weird to me. Oh my god. Oh, you bitch. That's well, gonna be hard to get back up to 30 now, but I'll try. You get tired of dying here, you can always go did in Hoida. I don't want to play Noida. I am I'm feeling ambitious here. Okay. Well, less ambitious. Fuck you, Star Fury! You let me down! I love that it auto-corrected to Hoida, because that's somehow better. I'm starting to get excited about that leftover half Reuben. There's a part of me that's nervous that I'm being punished. Oh, okay. I fucking hate Star Fury. There's a part of me that's nervous that I'm being punished for refusing to learn how to parry. Which would be a real buzzkill for me. I don't parry for shit, thank God, because I don't want to. I think your mistake is getting hit, just don't get hit. Yeah, you know what, I wish I'd thought of that. Damn, I know I had breakfast this morning, but I may, I may have to... If this run meets an untimely demise, not that I'm rooting for it, but if this run meets an untimely demise, I may have to, uh... Look up that leftover Reuben like I'm calling an ex-girlfriend while I'm drunk. Heading out for vacation later this afternoon. Wife and I are going up north because it's usually cooler up there. At this point, we'll take anything that isn't 120. 48 in non-freedom units, but even up north is 110 now. Literally nowhere we can go is out of this furnace that doesn't involve air travel. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I, I, I um, woke up this morning to CBS talking about how there's a chance that the, that the Phoenix area could spend 30 days, could spend 30 days in plus 130 degree heat. That's bananas to me. That sound. That sounds miserable. Oh, fuck you, you hit me.
It's warm here in Richmond, but it's it's warm. It's not hot. Oh, dude, I love throwable objects. Oh, but I like I just don't. If I had a melee weapon that I gave a damn about, if I had a melee weapon I give a damn about, I'd, I'd fuck with it. But we've also realized throwable objects doesn't stop bosses for shit. Yeah, that like honestly, case troop, that might be the most miserable that I feel as a human related to the elements. Like, I'm not crazy about being wet. I'm not crazy about windy conditions because I, I don't enjoy the cold. That said, I don't know that there's any more miserable feeling as a sentient being. I don't know that there's any more miserable feeling as a sentient being than being in a place where it's hot at night. I fucking hate that. Like I, that, like that makes me like um, legitimately angry. Like honest to God, like I kind of want to hit somebody. Yeah, if I'm cold, I can add layers. If I'm hot, like, nighttime is supposed to be the reprieve from hot. So when that doesn't happen, I, like, I, I genuinely get kind of pissed. Why do I live somewhere where the air hurts my face? That's, that's so fucking stupid. <laughs> I was just looking at Psycon's banter with Apocalyptic, and I'm angry that I'm giggling at it. I need money on this, I mean, in general, but I need money on this run. Yeah, there's nothing worse than being hot in humidity and the humidity and the heat makes you sweaty, which makes you feel wet, but you know that you've been nowhere near water. Nope. I'm Mr. Kill Your Kids. There we go. What's the $88 song? Uh, save your seed. Can I get an amen? An amen now, brothers and sisters. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen now, scatter the seed. Nailed it. You guys didn't know that Miracle of Sound wasn't playing right then, huh? You guys just thought I started the song for free, but that was actually me singing it. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it was uncanny. Listen, I've got a, a pleasant connotation with that song right now. Because yesterday when Rusty played it, it was so that I could get fish and chips. I made the mistake of telling Rusty and Glitch that I've been daydreaming about, uh, specifically about fish and chips. But I also mentioned to a drunk, to a drunk Glitch that the Reuben rule for food was still effect. Even as I was trying to lose weight, I would just be way more careful. I would just be way more careful about uh, limiting my portions. And in a matter of seconds, I had heard, because of Glitch and, and, and Rusty, I heard the Bit Bomb and Save Your Seed pop off at the same time. I was told to get either a Reuben or Fish and Chips, so I got both. I tried the fish and I tried the chips. And then I took the rest of it down to Rory, who demolished it. I mean, he fucked. 
he fucked it up, man. He licked that. He licked that to-go plate clean. That kid loves fish and chips, man. Good grief. And then I had half the Reuben and saved half of it for today. Man, where were you on the last run, Ice Crossbow? I could have used you. How dare you, Stevie? Why are you so angry at everyone today? All you have is the best unpaid job in the world. Is that not enough for you? I, yeah, the fish and chips, I gotta admit, like they, I, they were not the best fish and chips I've ever had, but man, did they scratch a mighty itch. I was so pleased with them. The owl gets down, but the problem with the owl is that the problem with the owl is once you get hit, it goes away, which is fine so long as you never get hit. Oh, I tried to fucking move and he, I tried to jump and he did that and that just kept him in line of sight. It's fine so long as you never do exactly what I just did. But then if, if you do in fact get hit, you have to wait for a minute to summon him again. Anyway, the last time I heard Save Your Seed was because Rusty wanted me to have fish and chips. And you know how food makes me happy. Plus, I was, I was, I, I had a momentary uh, panic attack where I did that thing that children of scarcity do. I did that thing that children of scarcity do where I had a momentary like lapse of panic where I thought to myself, you know, I know I just started trying to get back to the gym and I know that I, what am I supposed to do with that? Oh fuck. That's not what I meant to do. You fast fuck. Oh, he's got a speed boost right now. God damn it. I was trying to get at it from the side. I thought it would let me and it did. Damn. Whoops. But yeah, I was proud of myself for, uh, I was proud of myself for not, uh, overindulging. Tesla coil better. I did have a moment where I thought to myself, you know, I could just forego all these healthy choices that I'm trying to make and truck both these restaurant entrees simultaneously. And I'm actually, you know, it's a it's a pretty small thing to be proud of. I didn't cure cancer. But I talked myself out of it and managed to stick to my self-imposed rules so that I wouldn't feel like I gave up on my plans on day one. That's right, you know, you could put the fried fish and uh, french fries inside the Reuben and eat them simultaneously. I struggle, man. I was telling Amber, because I was talking to her about it last night, and she was just like, were things really that bad? And I was like, my parents never let me go to bed hungry, no. I was like, but that doesn't change the fact that, like... That doesn't change the fact that, like, uh, when we go on the rare occasions that we go to, like, Red Lobster after church. On the rare occasion that we go out and get something to eat after church. I'd wait until the meal was finished, not knowing when we'd get to go out to a restaurant again. I'd wait until the meal was finished, and then I'd turn around to everybody who was at the table and be like, You gonna eat that? You throwing that away? 
and then I would clear everybody else's plate because I wasn't about to let like fried shrimp or fried fish fillets or bits of crab or lobster go back to the garbage can like that sounded like like low-key madness to me and my mom would be like well do you need more food are you full and I'm like this has nothing to do with being full and everything to do with the fact that I'm not gonna let you throw this perfectly good food away Sorry, I just knew I needed to finish exploring this area. It's a pretty gnarly long shot that we'll be able to get 60 kills on this, but I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a, a an attempt. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to think and feel the same way, Rapid. That food talk is gonna win out and that that, uh... That food talk's gonna win out and that that, that uh, leftover Reuben is about to get called up to the show faster than we anticipated. My house mom uh, brought back a bunch of leftovers from a birthday party. She couldn't fit the rest in the fridge, so I grabbed Tupperware and stashed the rest of my mini fridge. She was so confused with the same line of thinking. Chat, y'all should have seen what happened the last time we did Disapproving Owls. Nate and Rami Ishmael dropped like a combined $3,000 on enough sushi to feed all of the most interesting people they wanted at a meal at PAX South. But they ordered so much fish. You know those party platters that you'll get from a place? Let's see. They ordered so much food and had so many people kind of no-show that we had like three of these. We had like three of these because they, they ordered enough food to feed like eight tables of 12. And so when everything was said and done, like we ate sushi until we were sick to our stomachs. And then we sent sushi home with anybody who wanted to take some back to like their hotel or their Airbnb. But when everything was said and done, Nate ended up with about three or four of these in the refrigerator of our San Antonio Airbnb. The problem was everybody was flying out the next day. So by 11 o'clock the next day, like four of these trays loaded with this much sushi, we're all gonna go in the garbage. Chat, when I tell you that I went to the San Antonio airport on zero sleep, because I stayed up all night eating two of these trays by myself. I mean that I stayed up all night eating two of these trays by myself, so much so that after a long shower and, uh, and deodorant and a little cologne, I got on the plane and I still smelled like fish oil. I was, I was sweating fish oil. I still, I, I, I I psycho stick I kicked myself because there was like a tray and a half left in the I, like I, I I don't know if Nate was smart enough to just lie to me but I mean like this was how much leftover sushi we had I think Nate was just smart enough to lie to me and just tell me that the rest of it got eaten because he knows that that to this day if that went in the garbage it would haunt me I ate sushi until I until my sweat smelled like fish oil I like I wasn't hungry for two days afterwards. I ate sushi for dinner until I was sick at the restaurant. And then I got home and I took a poop. 
And then I went into the uh, living room of the Airbnb and I brought out tray number one and I put on a movie and just went. Until tray number one was gone. That's like two, three in the morning. I went back to the refrigerator, got tray number two, put on a new movie. I think I was watching Remember the Titans. Just started working through tray number two. I ate so much sushi that by the time I was done, I was like, I don't think I ever want to eat sushi again for a minute. And I think by the time, like two days later, when hunger hit me for the first time, I was like, you know, I could fuck with some sushi. I wonder if Nate still got that sushi from the place in San Antonio. And he's like, dude, I didn't bring it with me on the plane. I'm in Seattle now. And I was like, oh, so no. That's, <laughs> so that's a no then. Fuck. Really? All right. Fine. Psycho Stick, what's going on, man? Happy to have you here, as always. As per the huge. Dagger Hilt, happy to have you here as well. My mother's a terrible cook growing up. Eating food was something I had to take time out of what I was doing to choke down to keep living. It wasn't until I got married that I realized food was delicious. Even the bad food that my mom made was still pretty good food. She cared about serving us good food. She just never had anyone to teach her how to do it. So that meant that a handful of the things that she made were not, uh, let me check my notes here, not great. But no, there's only like a handful of them. A lot of them like were still pretty good. They were just like, you know, some Betty Crocker boomer food. I really do want to do that series on TikTok where I want to do that series on TikTok where I feed my kids stuff that I was readily expected to eat in the 80s. I want to do canned tamales. I want to do canned spinach and asparagus. I want to do those boil in a bag meats. I want too much sushi now, dude. Psycho steak. If I, if you were if you were in Richmond, Virginia right now, I can the show. I'd beg chat for spending money, and I literally would just take us. I'd take us to the nearest sushi place and just eat until we were sick. Fuck it. You only live once, and that life is detrimented if it's not loaded with sushi. Uh, let's see, Hormel canned tamales. I do like deviled ham. My mom used to get these. That, yep, there. That's what they look like. They come out of the can and they have uh, the wrappers on them. And then you take the wrappers off and they look like that. And then you microwave them and that fat, thank God, mostly melts away because it, it looks like carrots, but it's actually fat. I think it might be like, it might be trans fat. Nope, it's just saturated fat. So the saturated fat, if you're lucky, melts. So the saturated fat melts, you peel the wrappers off, and then if you were my mom, you slather it in Heinz ketchup. All powerful Jim Bob, thank you for the biddies. So this was one of those things that my mom constantly had on hand. You took the wrappers off? I mean, I know they're good for fiber, but Okay, what am I doing? Uh, to the left, to the left, everything you own in a box to the left. Which one gives me the most health? Wow, really? Brutality? I would not have guessed. I hate it. Looks like the kind of thing that would involve ketchup at some point. 
weirdly, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I, I've made the case that, like, I have an affinity for just hot garbage food, man. I understand that I like some straight trash food. Oh, my. I understand that I like some straight trash food. I won't sit here and ever try to make the case that canned tamales are somehow better than legitimate tamales. I love tamales too much to slander them like that. But I gotta admit, a lot of that shitty food did scratch an itch. I can't tell you what that itch was. It might have been an infection. But if I had them right now, I would eat them just to describe them to you. My mom would make boiled chicken with no seasoning. You could add salt and pepper that are on the table. Nah. <laughs> nah. <coughs> Nana didn't do that. Nana tried. And more often than not succeeded in case my mom is listening. More often than not, my mom nailed it. Every once in a blue moon, though. The fuck? Get these goddamn graphics off my screen. I need to see what I'm doing. I'm in the fight of my fucking life here, guy. Ah! Can't see shit. You got all this fucking signage in your shop. You asshole. Well, at least I got my 60 right before I got hit. Oh, that felt fucking great. Love that. Hurt me more, daddy. You misspelled broiled, right? Right? Please say you please say you just misspelled broiled. It's the uh Natalie Portman meme from Star Wars. You misspelled broiled, right? Right? My dad's gotten better about the fact that he used to he used to grill the shit out of steaks. He used to grill the shit out of steaks until they hit well done. And then serve them with steak sauce to make up for the fact that they were dry. But he'd season them well with like salt and pepper and stuff. Like, I don't know. He cared enough to like salt and pepper the meat, but then he'd overcook it. It wasn't until I got old enough to go back and like grill a steak for them that he was like, that looks rare. He's like, that looks raw. I was like, Dad, I I, I used a, a cooking technique called leaving the flavor in. That is a medium rare steak. And thank goodness, as stubborn a man as my father may have been, he was not so stubborn that he didn't taste that and, and immediately go, yeah, that's 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 better. That is absolutely better. You're right. Chat, I th I think I have to I think I have to go grab this Reuben. I was not living right by the stereotype. I wish I'd made a green coffee fueler. Well, ice cold water's hitting the spot though. Bless. Oh. <laughs> Way to fuck up my joke, Taffy.
Oh my god. I wasn't paying attention to the fact that that dude closed the gap in a big way. Yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely sitting here right now going, man, orange mango guava sounded really good. Fucker, snipe me out of midair. If I'm going to keep rolling with this, I, I'm going to have to go out of my way to... Uh, I... Uh, Stop, Tappy. Play good, you dummy. Oops. I'm gonna have to go out of my way to like, sort of calm, calm this all down. I feel like at least we got hit early here. I also have to remind myself that just because something is like, just because something is locked down on the ground doesn't mean it can't fight me. I also have to remind myself, oh my fucking God, dude. Ah! I was trying to drop down and instead he jumped up. I was trying to do that and instead he jumped up. Absolutely livid, mate. I'm gonna have to look into potentially. <sighs> he was attacking the Tesla coil, not me, but he hit me. I'm okay with it. I actually, like, genuinely am okay with it. I was so out of my rhythm and getting so tilted. Maybe, maybe a clean start is what we need there.